in the early 90s, uh, the critics were saying that you were an unusually versatile artist. <laughs> well, I guess you could say that only in the sense that um, I, I, I don't want to be pigeonholed into any one thing because I love to paint a lot of things and I love to travel and that, you know, just feeds that uh, enthusiasm for painting a lot of things, you yeah. know. Um, so, yeah, I, I like to do more lots, than one subject. Uh-huh. You said last time that you can't recall any time in your life when you didn't think you were going to be an artist. Or yeah, that's really true. Mm. Um, that's all I ever thought about and all I ever wanted to do. I, I mean, earliest memories are... Well, there's one that I just uh, seems to be sort of etched in my brain where I, I was looking up um, at maybe my grandmother, I'm not sure, uh, who was writing on a kitchen counter and I remember being lower than that and looking up and watching this pen move and thinking that was so cool or pencil whatever it was and that's all I wanted to do was um, make pictures you know draw things yeah. have you ever not thought of yourself as an artist I mean ever huh um, I don't think so I mean, you know, when you're young and it's something you're aspiring to be um, and you wonder, will it ever be possible? I mean, you're doing everything you can, but it's, sometimes you wonder if you can make enough money and, you know, if, if, if you can get the training, because I lived to go to art school. I mean, I couldn't wait to go to art school and, you know, we didn't have much money at all. I mean, really none. So, you know, you you're just not sure how it's going to happen, but I always felt that it would. It's yeah. strange. Yeah. There was a teacher who uh, taught, um, was actually, oh, what did they call it? It wasn't, there were two art classes, interesting, at this high school. Uh, this was before everybody started dumping art and, and music and such, but uh, it was, there was fine art class and then this commercial art class. Interesting, I they don't sure don't do that anymore. But I was got to be quite close with the commercial art teacher, um, and I'm not sure why I wasn't in the other classes. So there was some reason. Anyway, maybe it was the type of diploma I was getting. I can't remember. But uh, she was terrific, and she really helped me a lot. And I believe her name was Mrs. McCollum. Oh, okay. And uh, like I, I'm, you know. Not sure how you spell it, but probably M A C A L L U M or O M McCollum. Hmm. <laughs> but she was really terrific and helped me a lot. And the principal of the school was, uh, gosh, I can't remember his name. See, I'm getting old now. And he was great. I remember I painted a wall on one of the, I did a scene on the wall, one of the office walls. And it was of a place called Lundbreck Falls in Alberta, and it's probably not there anymore. I'm sure they painted over it. But he, that was from, that was where he had grown up, and he had me paint a whole wall of his. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. But then you had some special help with Mr. Coleman. Oh, that, he was a math teacher. Yes, I did. And uh, I'm back. It, at that high school, and I'm not sure if it's the same in Canada now, but you could get two different kinds of high school diplomas. You know, one if you, a certain kind if you wanted to matriculate and go to university, or you could get a, another diploma where, you, you know, you didn't have to get as many credits or take certain courses, you know, uh, like you didn't have to take math um, 12 or whatever, you know, you could take an easier math and still get a high school diploma. And math and, and I don't get along very well. So anyway, I was taking this math 14, which was an easier math, and even then it was a struggle for me. And uh, thanks to Mr. Coleman, he, he knew that I wanted to go to art school more than anything, and I just needed to get that diploma so I could go you know, to this uh, community college and go to the art school. Anyway, uh, he passed me, and I know I didn't deserve it. So <laughs> he was just very sweet. So God bless those teachers who recognize and help kids in, in those sorts of ways. I did a lot of pet portraits. 
you know, I did, um, and I had a dear friend who I met around this time who helped me. Her name was Evelyn Kalo, well, Evelyn Hardwick, and then she, her married name, she married um, after that. But anyway, Ev um, was sort of helping her. She was a retired nurse and I think um, just was looking for something to do. And she sort of took me under her wing as a young artist and was acting as my manager. And she would, uh, you know, get pet portrait commissions for me and we'd go and photograph, you know, Fluffy or whoever. And and I'd do them, do these pastel portraits of pets and so it wasn't a great living but it was something and I'd go around to horse fairs and bull sales and draw pictures of the animals and sell them for a dollar if somebody wanted a picture of their bull or their horse (laughs) anyway (laughs) yeah it was a really uh, strange year you know, um, losing my mom in uh, March of 1978. And then uh, this friend of mine, Evelyn, and I think before my mom died, I think she had found out about this too. I can't remember who found about, out about it first. But they heard about this uh, painting school, uh, art school, in Penticton, British Columbia, Canada, at the Okanagan Game Farm. And it was run by Clarence Tolenius, um, you know, Canadian painter. And they thought it would be a good idea for me to do something like that because he's a wildlife painter and I was interested in wildlife at the time and, and I always drew animals. And, and so they, but, you know, I was uh, pretty immature um, at that time and, and scared of everything. And I thought, oh gosh, I don't know if I want to do this. It's, you know, uh, anyway... Uh, but then my mom died, and, and, and Ev thought it would be a great thing for me to do, and I still was dragging my feet, but I, I did it. And my sister went with me the first year because she was kind of interested in doing it too. So the two of us went to the Okanagan Summer School of the Arts. And uh, gosh, you know, this is that point in the story where you say the rest is the history because it was, it was a, as soon as, the first day when we walked into this big auditorium at the game farm, I knew that, that I'd found what I was looking for for all those years. But in 1978, at the summer session, uh, Clarence mentioned that he had he know, knew this artist, Bob Lougheed, in the States from Santa Fe, and that he had talked to Bob about starting some kind of uh, get-together, a, a, a group, or talking about getting a group of artists together at the game farm uh, every fall. It would be a fun thing for artists to come together, artists of like mind, to paint together every fall at the game farm because it's a great time of year. Uh, some of the artists who were making you know, good livings at the time, that was a, a quieter time for them. They had a bit of a, a block of time where they could get away. And, uh, it, you know, it was a good time to be at the game farm, weather-wise and, and crowd-wise, you know, it was quiet. Uh, so he invited some of us at the summer school who he thought were serious students to come to that. Uh, and by the same token, Bob, on his part in Santa Fe, invited, you know, a few young artists that he knew to come up as well. And in addition to those of us who were students, they invited, I mean, other artists who were peers of theirs, you know, contemporaries of theirs, like uh, Ken Riley and, uh, gosh, Paul Strissick, um, John Clymer, uh, let me see, Harley Brown. Uh, there's a, you know, there's a, a wonderful history mm-hmm. of the game farm.